Hey there, welcome back. It's Shireen here with another Adobe tutorial for fashion and textile design video. Uh, today, uh, we're starting off in Photoshop. As you can see, we've created our reduced and cleaned um, swatches of our repeated seamless prints. Um, and we've got a couple pages of some beautiful prints that we created in the um, videos prior to this one. So make sure to check out the whole playlist for those. But once we've got our reduced motifs, they're in repeat, we've got nice letter size swatches, we're ready to start calling them up with our own colors. So for that, we're going to take a detour. And in today's video, we're working between um, Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop to use those colors and bring them cross platform. So this is how that looks. Um, if we jump back over into um, Illustrator, you'll see here that we've got our color palette saved. We've got our swatches on our layout, and we've got in our swatches panel here um, all of our colors saved, named, um, and ready to go. So what I would just nearly need to do to be able to use these in Photoshop is I'm going to go to the flyout panel here on the side of the swatches panel, the, um, the flyout menu, the options go to the right of the swatches, however you want to kind of um, remember that. It's off to the side here, and it's here where we say Save Swatch Library as ASE. So ASE, it'll help if you know the acronym, so it'll help you remember what it is. It means Adobe Swatch Exchange. So we're exchanging and using it between programs, exchanging between programs. So ASE, all right, and that's it. Save Swatches ASE. I'm going to go ahead, actually, and move it to a folder um, with I think it's going to be here, repeats in Photoshop. I'm going to call this a color palette for Photoshop just so I can make sure that I'll be able to access it. And here's where I just need to be careful. File format dot ASE. Remember that because there's multiple file formats. There's also ACO, which is Adobe Color Object. That just means it's a color object, but it's actually native only to either Photoshop or Illustrator. ASE is the file that we need, the file format for working between the programs, okay? So ASC, we're good to go. We can't save gradients or patterns as ASC, that's okay. We're gonna switch back into Photoshop. And now to be able to access those colors, we're just gonna take a little trip actually into our swatches panel and prepare this um, to be able to better work with those colors. Um, it's a little bit trickier in Photoshop than Illustrator to manage our swatches panel, but not by much. It's just one extra step. You would just need to come again to the side of the panel where the options are for swatches. You're going to go to the preset manager, and that's it. This is this extra step. All right, so in Illustrator, you remember, we clicked on the first color, shift click to the last color, and that's when we hit delete. So we just do it this way in Photoshop, coming into the preset manager. This leaves our swatches panel blank. Here is where we can come in and say, load swatches. And we're gonna go back to that document. That's our ASC file, it's right there, ready to go. And that's why I like to do this because then I just have it by itself, just working only with my colors. And then if I choose, I can also look at them as a list, rather, sorry, as a list for my eyes. I like a large list. So you can kind of choose how you kind of look at all your colors. There they are. So those are my colors. This is my um, swatch of my artwork. Let's get started. I'm gonna jump over into my layers. And I'm going to um, click onto my layer. I'm gonna hold Option or Alt in PC to make a duplicate, and I can just drag that down. Duplicate layer, um, I can call that colorway one. Alternatively, I can also go to the side of the panel and create a duplicate layer. So I'll show you um, what that looks like next. But for right now, click on the layer, drag it into the new layer icon, but with Option or Alt held down, it'll make that duplicate. So I've got another layer on top. I always like to just keep that bottom background layer locked. Pretend you don't even see it just in case you need to get back to it. But now we've got these two colors. I can go in to, um, to use my magic wand and I can set my magic wand to make sure that there's no extra tolerance, no anti-alias, Contiguous is not checked so that I don't just contiguously choose one area, but rather all the areas of color. And uh, that's it, I'm ready to go. Select white. All the white is selected. And I'm going to change it to, let's change it to dusk. Select dusk. 
grab my paint bucket. I could, well, actually, I'll do a few different ways. I'm going to do option delete as my shortcut since I'm going to go ahead and show you some shortcuts. Once I've selected my color, option delete. Okay. For my black, let's also this time under gradient, I'm going to check out my paint bucket. I'm going to deselect since my selection is still active. That's command D or control D. I'm going to choose my paint bucket. It's under the gradient tool. Yeah. So the paint bucket, I just have to set up the same way no tolerance, no anti-alias, contiguous, not checked. And this time, uh, I'm going to check rust. And that way I can color up all of my arches. So it's actually really pretty. So again, I just am working between either. I can use my magic wand, select my color, and I can choose option delete to fill with the foreground color. Or I can choose paint bucket with those same settings and just click. So let me continue. I'll do about two or three um, colorway so you can get the hang of this. Come out to the side of the panel, duplicate layer. This one is going to be called colorway 2, color option 2, yeah? So colorway 2, once again, I can either select with the magic wand, making sure my settings are correct, and I'm going to choose this time uh, gale green. It's in my foreground, option delete, okay? And I can also then, with my magic wand, select teal, and with the arches selected, option delete. That's my colorway too. Deselect, command D, control D. Let's do one more variation using the paint bucket, duplicate layer. This one will be colorway three. And I'm going to go ahead and this time again, making sure I've got that paint bucket. Underneath the gradient tool is that paint bucket. Make sure no tolerance, no anti-alias, no contiguous. Let's do a third colorway for um, good measure. Mist and blush. There. All right. So you can see I've got these really nice colorways all ready to go. And whenever I'm ready, they're on a letter size page, 200 DPI. I haven't had to do anything. I'm either working with my magic wand or my paint bucket to fill. The last thing I would want to do is file, um, export layers to files. So that means each of these layers will become its own file. If I don't necessarily need this whole page, by the way, I could also go ahead and just crop a small corner. All right, so I can just kind of crop and it's telling me right now my, my size is about four and a half by five and a half, something like that. So if I only just want that one little area, if I'm going to just be making swatches that are that big, I can actually just go ahead and just crop that. Um, you know, I can be even more kind of specific just to the top of the arch, just to the bottom of that arch. So once I get sort of to the shape that I want, if I'm ready to export that, file export. layers to files. But I just want to say another word about that. If you do crop, um, just letting you know, I mean, it might even be easier to, um, to kind of crop once you kind of know what your layout is. Maybe you just want to rest on this file until you're sure of the size of like how big of a area you need. But no matter what, I'll just remind you, when you're working with a repeat, you want us to be able to really see the repeat at least a couple times, two or three times, just so we can see that it's a repeat rather than an isolated or engineered placement. If we only see it just happening once or twice, then it's not clear that it's a seamless repeat. So it does need to be big enough at least to show that motif two to three times minimum. So, you know, this is again, this is all kind of your choice. You can either just export the letter size pages, crop them later, or you can go ahead and crop them before once you're ready to export. Last but not least, let's do it finally. Layers to files, and I'll show you what that looks like. You're going to create a new folder for them. And inside here, I'll create a new folder for my layers. Um, these are going to be uh, arches, arches, print, colorways. And I'm going to go ahead and open. And that's it. The prefix, I could actually call it um, colorway. I would save this file as um, I would normally want to save it first. Hold on, let me save it first. File save. Let's call it arches, arches, print. Okay, save it as a TIFF. Great, 
save the layers, great. The layers will increase the file size, that's okay. Now go back, layers to files, finally. Um, browse, I'm putting them into there. I'm gonna say the prefix will be um, colorway, colorway, um, yeah, colorways. And then visible layers, file type, I can make it a TIFF, include the ICC profile, image compression none. And if I run that script, just to let you see, file open, Oh, they're all there. They went into that folder instead. Colorway 1, Colorway 2, Colorway 3, they're all there. Really beautiful. Okay, so that's how you're going to go ahead and um, save your layers to files. You're ready to kind of use these for any layout. They're colored up in your own beautiful colors. Uh, and uh, what could be better than that? You can start filling your flats, filling your artwork with your own prints, um, and you see now sort of the process from start to finish. So go ahead, um, play around. Uh, don't you know don't be shy be sure to ask questions make sure to take notes please like and subscribe uh, let me know how i'm doing uh, more videos to come thanks for watching see you next time